Good morning, Dr. Phil here. Today we'll be discussing on CO2 absorbance. Features of the ideal CO2 absorbent Lack of reactivity with anesthetic agents Lack of toxicity Low resistance to airflow Low cost Ease of handling Efficient in CO2 absorption The absorber canister On modern anesthetic machines, the CO2 absorber canister consists of two clear plastic canisters arranged in series. They are either filled with loose bulk CO2 absorbent in the operation theatre or supplied as plastic disposable cartridges pre-filled with CO2 absorbent in the factory called pre-packs. Safety issues CO2 absorbent granules can lodge between the clear plastic canister and the O-ring gasket of the absorber, causing gas leakage. Defective pre-packs can be the cause of gas leakage. If the clear plastic shipping wrapper of the pre-pack is not removed, total obstruction of the circle system can occur. Exchange of canisters, for example for refilling, while the circle system is used for ventilation can cause gas leakage, unless proprietary CO2 absorbent canisters are used, which are designed to prevent this. CO2 absorbent granules Size If the granules are too large, the surface area for absorption is insufficient. If they are too small, a high resistance to breathing occurs due to the narrow space between the granules. Current size granules are determined by trial and error to achieve the best compromise between resistance to airflow and absorptive efficiency. Granule size is measured by mesh number. This refers to the number of openings per linear inch in a sieve through which the granules can pass. For example, for a mesh number of 4, a 4 mesh strainer has 4 openings per square inch and for a mesh number of 8, an 8 mesh strainer has 8 openings per square inch. CO2 absorbance typically consists of granules in the range of 4 to 8 mesh. Canisters should be tightly packed to reduce channeling of gases through large gaps, aiming to have the total volume of space between granules equal the volume of granules themselves. The more uniform the shapes of granules, the higher the likelihood of uniform gas flow through the canister. Color indicators Indicator dyes are added to CO2 absorbers. They change the color of the CO2 absorbent as it is exhausted by progressive absorption of CO2. Various compounds and their color change. Phenophthalein, red to white, ethyl violet, white to purple, Clayton yellow, pink to cream, Titan yellow, pink to cream, Mimosa Z, red to white. It is important to know which dye is being used, as certain dyes change color in opposite directions, for example, phenophthalene versus ethyl violet. The rate at which CO2 absorbent becomes exhausted depends on the capacity of the canister, fresh gas flow rate, and the rate of CO2 production. CO2 absorbent should be changed whenever the color change indicates exhaustion. Change both canisters in a two-canister system. Consider changing canisters more frequently if they are compact canisters. In some situations, the color indicator does not reliably reflect the functional status of the CO2 absorbent. For example, prolonged exposure of ethyl violet to fluorescent lights produces photo deactivation of ethyl violet and the dye appears white even though the CO2 absorbent has been exhausted. Partial regeneration of calcium hydroxide can occur with migration of unused hydroxide ions from the core to outer areas, reverting the color of the indicator dye, which may be misinterpreted by the user as a new batch of CO2 absorbent. However, its absorptive capacity is actually limited in this state. In the absence of color changes, Signs that the CO2 absorbent is exhausted includes increased FiCO2. Every center should set its own FiCO2 limit to determine when the absorbent must be replaced, for example, 0.5%. Increased spontaneous respiratory rate if muscle relaxants are not used. Increased sympathetic drive, such as skin flushing, sweating, tachycardia, hypertension. Rule out malignant hyperthermia if there is increased CO2 production. Hypertension is followed by hypotension, tachycardia is followed by bradycardia, 
with worsening respiratory acidosis. There will be increased surgical bleeding due to hypertension and coagulopathy. Absorptive capacity of CO2 absorbance. Under ideal situations, the absorptive capacity of CO2 absorbance, which are measured in liters of CO2 absorbed per 100 gram of CO2 absorbent, soda lime 26 liters per 100 gram, para lime 26 liters per 100 gram, absorb 10.2 liters per 100 gram, lithium hydroxide. Absorptive capacity ranges from that similar to soda lime to up to 5 times more than absorb. Due to preferential channeling of gases through the canister through small passages of low resistance, the absorptive capacity of CO2 absorbers may be substantially decreased. The efficiency of soda lime, for example, may be reduced to 10 to 20 liters of CO2 absorbed per 100 gram of soda lime. A standard 450 gram canister becomes inefficient after approximately 2 hours in a completely closed system. Soda Lime Soda Lime is the substance used most commonly for CO2 absorption in rebreathing systems. The main purpose of Soda Lime is to allow rebreathing of exhaled gases within breathing systems by absorbing exhaled carbon dioxide. It is originally used in the water circuit Currently, it is used most commonly in the circle system. Large canisters containing up to 2 kg of soda lime are commonly employed. Composition of soda lime Calcium hydroxide 81%, some books quote up to 90%, bound water 15%, some books quote 14 to 19%. Sodium hydroxide 4%, some manufacturers reduce this to 2%. Potassium hydroxide less than 1% or nil. Potassium hydroxide was added as an accelerator but this strong alkali has been implicated in the formation of carbon monoxide and compound A. Thus, KOH has been removed by manufacturers from soda lime. Silica 0.2% Silica is added to produce calcium and sodium silicate which in trace amounts harden the granules which otherwise would disintegrate into powder. The efficiency of CO2 absorption varies inversely with granule hardness. Absorption of carbon dioxide by soda lime occurs by the following chemical reactions. The full equation. CO2 plus H2O becomes H2CO3. H2CO3 plus 2NaOH becomes Na2CO3 plus 2H2O plus heat. Na2CO3 plus CaOH2 becomes CaCO3 plus 2NaOH plus heat. Note that heat and water are produced in the reaction. A temperature of 60 degrees Celsius or more may be achieved in the center of a soda lime canister during CO2 absorption. Sodium hydroxide acts as a catalyst for the reaction as it is reformed in the final stage. If KOH were present, it would act as a catalyst and replace the position of NaOH in the above mentioned equations. The compound that is actually consumed in soda lime and barrel lime is calcium hydroxide. Some carbon dioxide may react directly with calcium hydroxide but in a much slower reaction. Efficient CO2 absorption by soda lime requires the presence of water, which can be obtained from soda lime itself, moisture from exhaled gases, and from the chemical reaction between CO2 and CaOH2. The overall equation is CO2 plus CaOH2 becomes CaCO3 plus H2O plus heat. Regeneration of calcium hydroxide. With migration of unused hydroxide ions from the core to the outer areas, partially exhausted soda lime can regenerate on standing. However, its absorptive capacity is limited in this state. Its color may also revert, for example, from white to red if phenolphthalein is its indicator dye. Other CO2 absorbers Bera lime Composition 20% barium hydroxide octahydrate 80% calcium hydroxide Compared with soda lime, Bera lime granules are of similar size to that of soda lime. The granular structure of Bera lime is better retained under various conditions of heat and moisture as barium hydroxide contains 8 molecules of water of crystallization to help to fuse the mixture. Barrel lime may contain potassium hydroxide as a chemical activator. However, 
potassium hydroxide has been implicated in the formation of carbon monoxide due to a reaction from isofluorine and fluorine or desfluorine and compound A due to a reaction from sevofluorine. The chemical reaction between CO2 and barrel lime is similar to that of soda lime, but it is less efficient. More water is liberated when barium hydroxide reacts with CO2. The equation is BaOH2 plus 8H2O plus CO2 equilibrates with BaCO3 plus 9H2O plus heat. 9H2O plus 9CO2 equilibrates with 9H2CO3. Then by direct reactions and by KOH or NaOH, 9H2CO3 plus 9CaOH2 equilibrates with CaCO3 plus 18H2O plus heat. Dehydration of barrel lime increases the concentration of compound A produced, where dehydration of soda lime decreases the concentration of compound A produced. Barrel lime produces less heat during CO2 absorption and is more stable in dry atmospheres. However, barrel lime has been implicated in producing fires within the breathing circuit when used with sevofluorine, resulting in severe patient injury. When dry barrel lime interacts with sevofluorine, very high temperatures up to several hundred degrees may occur. Combustible degradation products such as formaldehyde, methanol, and formic acid, high temperatures, and oxygen and nitrous oxide rich gases provides the conditions for a fire to occur. Avoid using sevofluorine with strong base absorbance, especially barrel lime, to prevent fires from happening. Absorb. Also known as calcium hydroxide lime, this is created in 1999. It contains calcium hydroxide 70%, water 14.5%, calcium chloride 0.7%, and two setting agents, calcium sulfate and polyvinyl pyrrolidine, to improve its hardness and porosity. Compared to other CO2 absorbers, MZOP does not contain strong monovalent hydroxide bases such as sodium and potassium hydroxide. Calcium chloride acts as a moisture retaining agent to allow for greater water availability, therefore there is no need for alkali agents, thus its use is not associated with carbon monoxide or compound A formation. Absence of NaOH and KOH eliminates the potential for regeneration of the indicator dye to avoid inadvertent reuse of exhausted CO2 absorbent. This makes MZOP non-hazardous, safe to handle during handling and disposal, and is suitable for landfill. Absorption capacity of MZOP is less, about 50% less than strong base containing absorbents, approximately 10.2 liters of CO2 absorbed per 100 gram of MZOP. MZOP costs more per unit and this limits MZOP's adoption in routine use. MZOP is non-flammable and has the least potential to delay inhalational induction at any flow rates. A research done by Ahmed et al. in 2011 demonstrated 25.7% annual anesthetic gas savings with MZOP use. Lithium hydroxide Lithium hydroxide has been used for many years in space exploration as a CO2 absorber. Its documented first use in anesthesia as a CO2 absorber is in 2010. Two available lithium hydroxide CO2 absorbents are available on the market, litholime and spiralith. Simplified chemical reaction LiOH plus H2O becomes LiOH H2O. 2 LiOH H2O plus CO2 becomes Li2CO3 plus 3 H2O. 2 LiOH plus CO2 becomes Li2CO3 plus H2O. Compared to other CO2 absorbents, LiOH is the most efficient absorbent, potentially having almost double the duration of effect per 100 gram of material than the next closest absorbent. Lithium hydroxide has a higher cost than other CO2 absorbents. Since it does not contain NaOH or KOH, no or minimal compound A or carbon monoxide is produced. Lithium hydroxide has been used as a CO2 absorber in space exploration. Regarding litholine, litholine uses an indicator dye to indicate its exhaustion, which produces a non-reversible color change. Regarding spiralis, Spiralith does not use any dye and its exhaustion is indicated by rising FiCO2. It is not supplied as granules or pellets, but as a rolled spiral polymer matrix with lithium hydroxide in a cylinder. 
as it retains its tridimensional shape. Its absorptive capacity is unchanged throughout the lifetime of the absorber. Spiralith requires special housings on the anesthetic machine. Once consumed, Spiralith can be returned to the producer for recycling. Reactions between CO2 absorbance and anesthetic agents Carbon monoxide Carbon monoxide can be produced from the reaction between the CHF2 group of isofluorine, enfluorine or desfluorine with desiccated soda lime or bara lime. This can produce high carboxyhemoglobin concentrations, potentially reaching up to 35% under certain conditions. Higher levels of carbon monoxide are more likely to be produced after prolonged contact between CO2 absorbance and inhaled anesthetics and after disuse of a CO2 absorber for two days or more, for example, over a weekend. Case reports indicate carbon monoxide poisoning occurs most commonly amongst patients undergoing general anesthesia on Monday mornings. Factors that increase the production of carbon monoxide by CO2 absorbance, choice of inhaled anesthetics, where the amount of CO production from greatest to least for a given MAC is desfluorine, enfluorine, isofluorine, halothane, sevofluorine. Dry CO2 absorbent, use of bara lime, high temperature, high concentration of inhaled anesthetic, low fresh gas flow, reduced patient size per 100 gram of CO2 absorbent. Interventions to reduce the production of carbon monoxide by CO2 absorbents. Education of anesthesia personnel on the etiology of CO production. Turn off the anesthesia machine after completing the last case of the day to avoid having fresh gas flow drying up the CO2 absorbent. Anesthetic machines continue to deliver a FGF of 200 ml per minute of oxygen even when the flow meters are turned off as a hypoxia prevention feature. Desiccated soda lime or bara lime is produced when it is dried out by this constant fresh gas flow. Change the CO2 absorbent if FGF was found to be flowing through it during the morning machine check. Adding water to the dry CO2 absorbent. Barrel lime and soda lime which contain 2.6 and 4.6 KOH respectively do not produce CO if they are not desiccated. Reduce or eliminate KOH in absorbents. Use carbon dioxide absorbents that do not contain strong bases. Kisjer et al. in 2007 studied seven different absorbents, hydrated and desiccated, for the potential to produce compound A and carbon monoxide in the presence of sevofluorine. Absorbent study. Six of the absorbents studied were primarily calcium hydroxide. Three of them contained an extremely small amount of KOH, 0.003%, and varying amounts of NaOH, 1.5-3%. The seventh consists only of lithium hydroxide. Results Carbon monoxide was only produced by desiccated absorbents containing sodium hydroxide. Compound A was produced by the absorbents containing sodium hydroxide in both hydrated and desiccated forms. One of the pure calcium hydroxide absorbents produced compound A when desiccated as did the lithium hydroxide absorbent. Compound A Compound A is a vinyl halide. Full chemical name is fluoromethyl 2,2-difluoro-1 trifluoromethyl vinyl ether. Compound A is produced from the reaction between sevofluorine and strong monovalent hydroxide bases, such as sodium and potassium hydroxides, which may be present in soda lime and bara lime. This reaction with bara lime is five times more rapid than with soda lime. The minimum level of moisture that will prevent such reactions is 2% for sodium hydroxide and 4.7% for potassium hydroxide. Other degradation products from this reaction includes compounds B, D, E, and G. However, only compound A has been shown to have any toxicity among these degradation products. The dose-dependent renal toxicity produced from compound A has only been demonstrated in rats, but never in humans. Thus, compound A does not appear to impose any significant risk to humans. Compound A production is reduced if the absorbent is cooled. New CO2 absorbers such as MZOP are being manufactured without these strong alkalis in order to reduce this interaction. Factors that lead to increased compound A production, low flow or closed circuit anesthetic techniques, use of barrel lime, 
sevoflurane used in high concentrations, high CO2 absorbent temperatures, and fresh CO2 absorbent. Measures to prevent soda lime from drying out, shutting off the anesthetic machine after use, changing the soda lime regularly, not relying on color changes to indicate dehydration, checking for unusually hot absorption canisters, checking for unexpectedly low concentrations of volatile agent, addition of zeolites that can physically trap water, or inorganic chlorides that crystallize water within soda lime. Trifluoromethane is produced from degradation of inhaled anesthetic agents by desiccated strong base carbon dioxide absorbance and this interferes with anesthetic gas monitoring. Dichloroacetylene, this is of historical interest. This compound is produced from the reaction between the volatile agent triline and soda lime. It is a potent neurotoxin that causes cranial nerve lesions, particularly in the trigeminal and facial nerves, and encephalitis. Phosgene is also of historical interest. This compound is also produced from the reaction between triline and soda lime. It is a potent pulmonary irritant and can potentially cause ARDS. The ideal CO2 absorber for low flow anesthesia. Issues of concern with low flow anesthesia, formation of compound A and carbon monoxide from interactions between volatile anesthetics and CO2 absorbers as mentioned above, reduced anesthetic concentrations, CO2 absorbent cost is increased as more exhaled gas is rebreathed during low flow anesthesia and more CO2 must be absorbed and CO2 absorbents get exhausted at a faster rate. Factors affecting the cost differences between CO2 absorbers Cost of a pre-filled canister or loose filled CO2 absorbent canister depends on local pricing, intrinsic efficiency of CO2 absorbent to absorb CO2, fresh gas flow rate and rate of CO2 production. In a study done by Hendricks et al. in 2016 comparing seven different CO2 absorbent materials from different manufacturers, Lithium hydroxide was the most efficient absorbent and carbon dioxide absorbents containing sodium hydroxide or lithium chloride had higher efficiency than pure CaOH2 absorbents who had the shortest absorbent lifespan. Although lithium hydroxide was found to be the most efficient CO2 absorber, lithium hydroxide is the most expensive due to increasing cost of lithium. The ideal or best suited absorbent is the lowest cost absorbent material that does not put the patient at risk from degradation of anesthetic agents. To reduce the cost of CO2 absorbents, one method is to change the CO2 absorbent when FiCO2 begins to rise. These are my references. Thank you.